Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back your lovely faces to a brand new video here on the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at an article that I was forwarded a couple of days ago. It is from the NewYorkMag.com and it's a very, very interesting read and it's actually quite sad as well to see. Because we've heard stories regarding Scientology and I mean a lot of stories regarding it. But with this one, excuse me. The title of this article is called How Scientology Exploits Foreign Workers. The churches use an obscure visa to bring in thousands of laborers and benefit from their toil. The article is written by Kevin T. Duggan and is a very, uh, like I said, very fascinating read. It shows and goes through the experiences of ex Scientologists how they were forced to work as slaves, basically, at their compounds in Clearwater, Florida and also at their headquarters in California. But we're going to jump in first, and we're going to see a little bit of what's been going on. We do have three stories from three different people, but the article, I will leave it below for you folks to read, because it's a huge article. It's not just one where you can be like, oh, you know what, you know, well, yeah, read, 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 done. It's not like that. There is, I think there's something like maybe 12 to 15 paragraphs, and each paragraph is like that big. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a long read, but it's a truly great article. So we're going to jump straight into it. So, Kevin has spoken with many ex-Scientologists who are members of the church who on an R1 visa, which is a permit that was created by US Congress for religious workers who are non-citizens to temporarily work in the United States. They would arrive at one of the Scientology headquarters, churches, and work supposedly on a part-time basis. However, Tina, not a real name, obviously, was 14 and living in England in 1994. Her parents lived on the Scientology compound in the States, and the church naturally wanted her to join her parents. The church officials told Tina what to say if anyone questioned her. She was told that if someone stopped her and asked her what she, where she was going, what are you doing, her reply was to be, I'm attending a special Scientology school, and I would volunteer for the church part-time. This was a lie. There's a lot of this going through the article where other people have spoken and told Kevin what happened to them, what they did, and just the experience of what happened to them, which is absolutely devastating to read. And it's very sickening to see that this is classed as a religion. Once Tina arrived, she worked shifts which went as long as 24 hours. In these shifts, she would be making furniture, construction, and performing administrative tasks. Tina told Kevin Duggan that none of it was voluntary. Now remember, at this time, Tina was 14. A 14-year-old who was told, you're going to work more than 12 hours more than 16 hours, more than 20 hours, and you're going to be making furniture and doing construction? She's 14 years of age. She's not meant to be doing any of that. Literally, she was told she was going over there to go to the school. But no. In these schools as well, for Scientology, they literally give you the bare minimum. So at simple math, and simple reading and writing level. Like, just so you can get along and just, like, sign your name and do other things. Attila Sonkoli. At the time, he was 21 in 97 and lived in Hungary. He was getting five calls a day from Scientology recruiters in Florida, urging him to come and work for them. He finally agreed, and to help him pass his interview, Scientology recruiters gave him the psychological profile of the person who would be interviewing him at the U.S. consulate in Hungary. That is just mind-blowing. Literally, it... I really don't know what to say to that one, because... You've given him the psychological profile of the person who's going to interview him. Almost like, right, if he does this, or if they say that they can't do anything, Come back with this. You got all this information that you could do. 
What the hell? It's almost like they think they're the CIA or something. But again, it's absolutely mind-blowing to think that they think they can get away with it. Sadly, they have, for the better part now of three decades. Once Attila arrived, they stole his passport and made him sign contracts in English, a language he didn't know or understand. He was instructed to tell the consulate that he was going to be a minister for Scientology performing religious duties. Another lie. When you see that, it's like, that is, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing, it is, and scary. Because these people who, they've gone forward and, you know, they're trying to, you know, see the good or, you know, we're meant to be the better the people. Again, look at that Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise. When you're a Scientologist, you just know you can do. You just do it. You know you, you're the only one who can help. Really? Okay. And I like Tom Cruise, well, his movies anyway. I do think he's a bit of a nut bar outside of them. But again, that is due to this church. But it does go on and, you know, this is what Attila has said as well. They needed us to do disgusting work. Very, very heavy manual labor. Attila estimated that two-thirds of the workers in Clearwater, Florida, were from overseas. Now, two-thirds of the workers, it wouldn't surprise me if the majority of them were like Attila. They didn't know or understand English, because those are the easier ones that you can manipulate. You speak English, so you're going to be a bit like, what? You know, like, why would I do that? And that's a thing going forward. But again, no, sadly, if you do speak English, by the looks of things... They try and get you in young so they can break your mind and they can break your spirit because that's exactly what they seem to do. But from here out, I will say as well, though, there is a bit of a trigger warning now, guys, for the next next couple of articles regarding this one because there is some, there is a lot of talk regarding SA. The worst comment about Scientology came from someone called Haley Caldani. She was 17 in 2001 and lived near Vancouver. She was fielding calls from a recruiter who wanted her to move to Clearwater. Her parents were Scientologists and had sent her there a year earlier to take classes. Haley says she was this by a man in his 40s in a swimming pool. As we've seen by the recent Danny Masterson case, church officials told Haley to take responsibility. For what happened and the church punished her. When I see things like this and I read them, and it brings me back to um, growing up in Scientology, the channel on YouTube, which is a great, great channel, and it's by A.A. Ron Aaron, and uh, he's got this question that he wants people to ask, like Tom Cruise and all the other ones who was who has thrown away and thrown to the side their family. But this question, the, the top part of it is, which, to be honest with you, is absolutely mind-blowing. And it's regarding, obviously, what this guy did to uh, Haley. And the question is, you know, why do people make the choice to throw away their family or throw to the side their family to dedicate to a dead science fiction writer who wrote these words in 1950? The seven-year-old girl who shudders because a man kisses her is not a computing. She is reacting to an engram since at seven, she should see nothing wrong in a kiss, not even a passionate one. There must have been an earlier experience, possibly prenatal, which made men or kissing very bad. To me, that is basically saying that L. Ron Hubbard is a bit of the uh, the P word. That's what that sounds like to me. And when you see, obviously, what Haley was saying regarding she was this by a man in his 40s while she was 17, it's almost like they tell people, like, it's fine. Everything that we tell you is true. But it does go on. For decades, scrutiny of Scientology has tended to focus on the outrageous and the glamorous, missing how the church aggressively used an obscure visa program and created a pool of exploited laborers, numbering in the thousands. This blind spot even seems to extend to law enforcement. 
For decades, the R1 visa has been a starting point for thousands of people coming into the United States looking for a better life or a new spiritual beginning before spending years doing backbreaking work for Scientology. Even those who managed to leave the church have had to deal with the traumas from their lives inside. Self-deletion, depression, forced separation from their families, like we were just saying regarding that question. A feeling of displacement from the world. And to be honest with you, with that photo there of L. Ron Herbert, to me that looks like he should be on a register somewhere. When people think of Scientology, they think Hollywood. They think funny. They think aliens. They think it's a big joke, says Haley Caldani. I spent the last 19 years pretending that never happened so I could try to fit into society and be normal. This has to be stopped. People need to know this exists. And this here is one of the galas, which is mind-blowing to me because that looks like, you know, oh, look at us, we're the best out of everything. And it's like, yeah, no, that just looks like you're trying to sell books. Because that is just mind-blowing to me. Look at it. You know, all these people as well, they pay thousands and thousands a year just to be members. You know, they, you know, to get to the next level, you got to pay like $25,000 or some bull or shit. Like, you know, it's like, where does the money go? Well, it goes there. And it goes into David Miscavige's uh, pocket. But again, you look at that book there, Dianetics, which is, uh, they claim is, apart from Christian, uh, the book, the, you know, the Bible, is the second most published book in the West. Well, it's probably the most published, but it's not the most sold. They've claimed that there's 83 million copies has been sold of Dianetics. And they're like, that's huge. Is only between 200 and 400,000 Scientologists. So you're telling me there's literally 82 and a half million people who have bought that book? No chance. But those, uh, those numbers do come from uh, the publication house and the ones who publish it. But the ones who publish it and their uh, book publication is owned by Scientology. So of course they're going to pump those numbers up because those are rookie numbers. And it's interesting because with this here, this Dianetics book, with them claiming it's the second most sold non-Christian religious book ever, it's like a Quran has sold over 500 million copies. You're not beating that book. You're not even beating the Book of Mormon, which has sold over 190 million. You know, it is absolutely crazy. But that's what we got for here, ladies and gents. And it's interesting that they would go forward and they would think everything that they do is legitimate, you know? But we've seen so many people come out and some of the horror stories that they've told from what happened to them, you know? There's like, if you didn't do what they told you, you'd be put in the hole. And in the hole is like where you would literally had the T word done to you, you know, T-O-R-T, -T, you know, you are e -D and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, holy moly, you know, it's absolutely crazy. But that's what we got for there, ladies and gents. But we will be going more into this. So if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for future updates. And I'll see you all very soon. Have a nice weekend.